Tell me a bit about being a Canadian and West Coast artist, because you're from Saskatchewan, but I associate you with the West Coast now. Yeah, I've done all my work here, had my family here. We've almost always, except for the 10 years in Montreal, uh, we've always lived here. And how was that, how was the West Coast? If you were a Montreal artist or a Toronto artist or a Halifax artist or St. John's, it would be, you know, these are different textures. What's the texture of the West Coast? Struggle. <laughs> I think. I think it's tougher here than it is uh, in Alberta for the performing arts in general. I think it's tougher. Um, you should uh, you, you ask Max, who is now the Playhouse. It's mm -hmm. tough. It's difficult. Um, interesting you know you it's, it's these spaces this Canada with its spaces it, it, Copeland has said a lot about this recently uh, that we are we are our spaces you know if I play in Victoria or you go and play in Victoria I don't come home here to Vancouver on my day off it takes me as long to get a home as, as to fly from Winnipeg it, it's it's the same there's huge spaces, and I remember once writing to, I think Flora MacDonald was the, what would it be, in charge of the arts, and who would that be in Ottawa? Heritage. But I don't think we had a heritage department. Okay. Anyway, let's say she was in heritage. And I wrote to her and I said, you know, you could change everything in the performing arts in this country overnight if you arranged for every even every artistic director, never mind the rest of them, to travel for only the tax, so that we could see one another's work, so that we could be there with one another on, on our important dates. And she actually she answered the letter herself. She said she couldn't do it. She couldn't, it couldn't be done through Air Canada. Do you think the spaces of Canada make a kind of isolation, artistic isolation between yeah. Winnipeg and... Vancouver. I think we've got, yeah, I think we've got a different, I think each one of them, each one of the, see, but I don't know any other country like it except the States, and certainly the, the, uh, it, everything's different in Texas than it is in Chicago. But if you, talking about spaces, coming across on the ferry today, yes, one cannot help but see the magic of British Columbia, just even on the ferry ride given the ocean, given the, the islands, given the, the kind of lush greenness in the winter, it has a, a magic that is its own. And the painters get it. And the painters get it. And the architects get it. We've got great architects that thrive. We've got great painters that the very magic, I mean, Gordon Smith has some prints that capture again and again what you experience today coming through those islands. And does that come into the theatre community? It's a different medium, isn't it? It's different. You bring mm. words in, you bring... Partly it does. I mean, Jack Shadbolt did our posters when I was at the Playhouse for two seasons. And there, you have, occasionally you see them being trampled underfoot in somebody's office. But... But Bard on the Beach is one theatre in Canada that, that can take the back of its open tent and aim it at, uh, you know, so you see out the back, you see spectacular, you see You're spectacular just, Yes, Vancouver. you've just hit my quarrel with Christopher. You know, I, I, he says that's why people come. They come because that, they're going to see the sky and the kites and the people walking by and that's what, what, that's why we're famous, that's why we're good, ha, ha, ha. I said, look, do it for the actors, would you please close it down as soon as the first word is spoken. What happens, well, it's not really fair, but it, it, it was happening, certainly. If I was acting with a great big hole behind me, I would gradually start to shout. Oh, right, yeah. Because you're, you can feel it. And that's what happens. It all gets... It all gets, starts to shout. Yeah. In, in his small theatre, the Douglas Campbell, space. 
um, doesn't happen because that hasn't happened. But you get you you picked it up. You said, far down the beach, they've got an open sky. Mm-hmm. It's a nice thought. But I do see in Montreal, I see the urbanness of Montreal affect the writing in Montreal. I see the urbanness of Robert Lepage's life with, you know, cities and aircraft and different plants affect how he constructs his theater pieces. So you think our spaces are... I'm wondering, you know, you, you have a... Make us feel smaller and less... I find there are two kinds of people here. You were asking me about the West Coast. There are people, it is so beautiful that there are people, especially at UBC, that can sit in the middle of the lawn and say, or they used to be, maybe I should say this is a matter of my age. There are people I know who have sat in the middle of a lawn and thought, if only I could be discovered, I could be famous because I'm good. I mean, you know, when you're good or not. And they wake up about 55 or 60 and realize it's almost over and they haven't done the thing. And then it's, too, it's panic time, it's too late. And there are other people, and I'm one of them, that are frantic all the time. They can never do enough because they realize that they can't sit in the middle of a lawn because there's too much to do. And someone comes along like you and says, are you remembering the painters in? And that feeling I had when I was coming across them, where is that? And you go, ah, we got to do that. I haven't got too much time. I got to walk. Where can I find the people to do that? And those are the two people that exist in the West Coast. You have seemed to have a career long association with Emily Carr. (laughs) Hate love, hate love. Hate love. Emily Carr was a painter, a West Coast painter. And here's Joy Cogwell, who were early in her career, did something on Emily Carr, and then the end you're doing uh, your play. What is it about Emily Carr that is interwoven with you? Well, I think, you know, I used to use this as publicity on the play I wrote, but I think for a long time, and maybe it's still happening, when an actress in Canada who is starting to worry about getting good parts uh, hits 56, which is when she met the group of seven and when, uh, when um, Lauren said, you are one of us, and she took off for best work, you think, ah, you know, I've got to get someone to write me a play about Emily Carr and let me play Emily Carr and maybe, you know, it'll be a great part and I'll, be, I'll understand her struggle because my struggle is much the same. And, and uh, she, that's when she made it uh, from 56 on. Before that, she wrote, you know, and was... You mean age 56, John? Uh Uh-huh, age 56. Uh, It was a hard play to write, because it it, it was about an actress who wanted to play Emily, and Emily wouldn't let her do it. She said, you know, actress can't play me, I'm an artist. Actress is, an actor is not an artist. And that became, you know, the, the the only sort of conflict I could find. Uh, uh, between the two people. And there was a, a scene that did that. Everybody said, we want more scenes like that, but that wasn't what the play was about. Right. The play was about what you've been asking you. Being a, being a theatre artist on the West Coast, you're up against the example of Emily. I mean, her, she... Very interesting. It took a man, you see, to say you are one of us. Before. Before. Before she did. And that's part of the beginnings of my life, too, the the men in charge of everything. 